So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about arrays. Now, the easiest way to look at an array is as a variable that allows you to store multiple pieces of data and then allows you to access those pieces of data individually. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what an array looks like. And then I'll show you how to use them. So this is what an array looks like. Now the way that this works is in between the brackets we have a list of items. In our case, it's a list of strings. We can access each one of these strings by using an index value that correlates with a position in the list. Now what that means in layman's terms is this. If I want to access the first value in the array, which is skateboard, I can do that with this syntax. So here we have an array with a bracket and a zero, which outputs the first item in the array. If we want to access the next item in the array, we could use one as our index value, like this. This pattern works for all the other items in the array, all the way to the end of it. The only tricky part is to not forget that this is a zero-based index. In short, zero is always the first value to access the first item in the array. And for the most part, this is the same with any other programming language, not just JavaScript. Arrays can be used with other data types, including the number data type, as well as the object data type. Now we haven't gone over objects yet, so I'm going to abstain from using them as an example. I'll eventually get to them, but for now I'm just going to show examples using numbers. With this first value, we must still use an index value of 0. If instead you wanted to access value 5 of the array, you would do this. You can also assign array values to variables, so here's an example of that. Here we've taken the fourth value in our items collection, which is index value 3, and we've assigned it to a variable called selected item. Now one thing I want to show you is that there is another way to declare arrays, and the syntax looks like this. Now this works exactly the same as the syntax I've been showing you. However, the previous syntax is typically what most JavaScript programmers use. So now that we have a basic understanding of arrays, I want to go over the concept of nested arrays, which are sometimes called multidimensional arrays. Simply put, these are arrays that contain other arrays. So for example, here we have three arrays, math books, programming books, and comic books. We then have an array called bookshelf that holds a list of these arrays. So let's take a look at our bookshelf array and see what's in the first index. What we get back are the strings that are inside of the math book array. So here's a question. What if we only wanted to access the second item in the math book array, which is a string, Musimathics? Well, it's easier than you might think. It's as simple as adding another bracket and an index value, just like this. So let's see one other example. Let's try to access the Superman string in the comic book array, which is in our bookshelf array. So here we have the bookshelf array. We have the index set to 2, which is the comic book array, and then inside of the comic books array, we wanted to access the Superman string, which is index 1. So let's do one other example that is one level deeper. Here I've added another array called furniture. In this array, I've added a string called couch, then I've added our bookshelf array. Then I've added another string called bed. Let's assume that from the furniture array, I wanted to access the book called JavaScript The Good Parts. Well, the way that we would do it is by first selecting the bookshelf array. Then inside the bookshelf array, we would select the programming books index. And then finally, select the index of the string, JavaScript The Good Parts. The last thing I want to show you is that you can use a different syntax for nested arrays that looks like this. Keep in mind if you're going to use this syntax, you must remove the var statement from the nested arrays in order for it to work. So this has been a quick overview of arrays. Until next time, bye-bye.